In this video, we will be using StatCrunch and Excel in order to create frequency distributions, frequency histograms, relative frequency distributions, relative frequency histograms, dot plots, and stimulant plots. So to access data from your textbook, go to the left and click on StatCrunch. Next, you wanna select view data sets from your textbook and we are in chapter two and we want to scroll down to section two and the first problem is number 33 color of tvs so the first thing we want to do is to be able to count the frequencies how many of each households have a certain number of tvs so we can go to stat tables frequency we want to select our variable, color TVs, and our table is going to make for us the frequency table and the relative frequency distribution as well. And here are some other options, but most likely we only want the first two. We will slow scroll down and click compute. So here are our frequency distributions, the color of TVs and frequency. And here's also our relative frequency distribution, our color TVs and the relative frequency. So to change these decimals into a percentage, we would have to multiply all of them by 100%. The next thing we want to create is our dot plot. We can select graph, and scroll down to dot plot, select our variable, scroll down, and with any of your tables, you always want to have a title of your graph. You also want to label your axes. So our X label would be the number of televisions. And the y-axis, we can label this as frequency and select compute. And here is our dot plot. We can also create a histogram. So we select graph, histogram, select our variable. We can select where do we want to start. So we want to start with zero. And we want our width to be one. And once again, we always want to have a title of the graph. Label our X axis. Label our vertical axis. Press compute. So one thing that you see that is different from what our textbook says is if our data is discrete, which it is, then our bar should be centered over our particular value. So that means in the center of this bar, we should see zero. In the center of this bar, we should see one, two, three, four, and five. So one more time. The difference between what StatCrunch does and what our textbook and our homework will do, if our data is discrete, meaning we do not have any decimals, then on our histogram, we should have that value directly in the center of each of our bars. So this is our frequency histogram. In order to create our relative frequency histogram, we select graph, histogram, variable once again, and this time under our type to get our relative frequency histogram, just click on relative frequency. Always need a chart title. We need an access title. And this time our Y axis is not going to be frequency. It's going to be the relative frequency. And once again, when our data is discrete, 
our value should be centered over our bar. So now these bars should touch because all histograms, the bar should touch. And our value, the number of TV should be directly in the center of the bar. So stack crunch is a little bit off from what the textbook says how our graph is supposed to look. Now let's go to problem number 40 where we have some continuous data. So on the left hand side you just click on your new data set. So this gives us the volume of the stocks. So we want our, in order to create our histograms, we select graph, histogram, select our volume of stock. We can tell where to start our histogram. We would like to start at zero and we want our class width to be three. And our type is frequency, so this is gonna be our frequency histogram. As always, we need a chart title. We need our x-axis label. And press compute. So here's our histogram, and as you can see, we are scaling down. The graph is tailoring off. This has a tail. So this is a right tail test. It is skewed on the right side because the right hand side is lower. If we wanted to create a relative frequency histogram, we select graph, we select histogram, select our variable, our type we need now need relative frequency. We start our bin at zero, our width is three. You could, if you like, put the value above the bar. That's perfectly fine as well. Titles, as always. We need an x-axis label. Y-axis label, this is our relative frequency histogram. So our relative frequency is on the vertical axis and press compute. So here are graphs side by side. If you're working on your project and you want to take this graph to a Word document, you can select options, you can do copy, or you can save this as its own individual file and put this in Microsoft Word. So let's see how that works. You can select, you can save your image and you can save it wherever you like on your file. Then in Microsoft Word, you can do insert pictures and wherever you saved that file, you can select it and enter it into your Word document. Now for our last example, problem number 43, we wanna create a stem and leaf plot for the fat grams. So click on graph, stem and leaf plot, select our fat grams and we can press compute so here's our stem and leaf plot created by stack crunch so what it does is it separates the data based on lower half and upper half so here that would be 11 and then the one and the two would make 12 and it separates it based on the top line would stop at four the second line will start from five to nine. But if you're doing it by hand, you can also put them all on one line. So you would have zero, three, nine as well.